Today we're going to be taking a look at the Dexter 3500 pound trailer axle with idler hubs. Offering the 5 on 4.5 inch bolt pattern, the part number is 35545I-ST-89. Now to ensure that this is going to be an appropriate fit for you, there are a few measurements you'll want to check. The first is going to be the spring center. So it's the center of the spring here to the center of the spring on the other side. That should be 74 inches. The next thing you'll need to confirm is your hub face measurement. So that's going to be the flat section that your wheel mounts on each side. From that to that on the other side, you want that to be 89 inches. As long as you're at that 74 and 89 on a 3,500 pound trailer, you should be good to go. The axle is also going to include a brake flange on each side. This is designed so you can bolt up either electric or hydraulic brakes. We're going to be actually putting a set of disc brakes on this trailer. But that gives you a nice option if you maybe your trailer doesn't have brakes now and you want to upgrade or you want to ensure that your current brakes are going to fit the axle. We've got our flange there. That's going to be 82 and 5 8 from the flange here to the flange on the other side. That's pretty typical. Here's a good look at the spindle that we're going to have in the axle. So the seal provided will ride along that. It's going to prevent any grease from coming out. We've got our inner bearing surface here our outer bearing surface here. As you can see, everything's nice and clean, brand new, ready to go together. The seal, both bearings, the nut for the end, the keeper, everything's gonna be included. Now here's a good look at your hub. As you can see, we've got the cast iron hub. It's gonna give us excellent strength and durability. And that's gonna have the races already installed inside, so our bearings are gonna match to that. And of course, the five studs. These are going to be half inch in diameter, and you do get brand new lug nuts to go on each one. These are all on here backwards. This is the way it came. You want the cone to face the tire, so keep that in mind. Now, when replacing your axle, it's a really good idea to also replace the U-bolts. These are a pretty cost-effective item you can get and ensure that you're going to have excellent, excellent hold with your axle to your springs. You can see this is going on a four-spring pack. It comes with the new lower plate and also four new flange nuts. That allows you to secure that in, keep everything locked tight so we don't have any issues for a very long time. You see we've got a little bit of an arch to our axle or a little bit of a curvature. That's to help achieve zero camber. So essentially our tire will be straight up and down, not tilted out or not tilted in at the top. That allows your tire to lay flat on the ground. It's gonna give you excellent contact to the ground, which will equal good stability. We also have a straight spindle design. So essentially what that means is that the center of our spindle is in line with the center of our axle. Also, this axle is designed to be overslung. You'll see our spring perch, or our spring mount here. It sits down on top of the spring that really brings the level of our trailer down a little bit, makes it easier to load and unload. The opposite of this would be an underslung axle. So our axle would be bent the other direction and it would mount down here to the bottom. So if your axle is configured like this, sitting on top of the springs, this is gonna be the guy for you. Now also with your axle, you're gonna get a one pound tub of marine rated grease from Lubramatic. Basically what this is, it's just a basic trailer grease but it has corrosion inhibitors built in. Most often times, this type of axle you see on a marine trailer. You can also see them on utility trailers. The good news is, this type of grease is gonna work in both applications. You wouldn't wanna use a standard trailer grease on a marine trailer, because if that water gets in there, it's really gonna hurt your spindle inside and cause rust and corrosion issues. That's where we have a big benefit with this. Now to begin your axle installation, you're going to need to remove the tires from both sides and you'll have the option at that point to either drop down the leaf spring or just pull one of the hubs, which is what we're going to do. We'll pull this one here. But first, let's get the tire out of the way. Next, we need to take the cap off the end of the hub. Now, this is going to depend on the type of axle you have. This one happens to have a bearing buddy in it. Um, some of them may just have the metal cap that's pushed on there. Some of them may have the easy lube cap. It's just going to depend on your application. 
What we want to do is just start tapping around the outside and you'll see this gap kind of begin to get a little bit larger here. It'll come off. Now we want to remove the grease, find our pin so we can remove the hub. So there's our cotter pin there. End of it's here, so we need to straighten that out. Use a pair of pliers. Now we've got our nut here. These are generally on pretty loosely, so just a pair of channel locks there. Get that nut taken off. Behind it, we got a little washer that holds our bearing in place. Take that out. We got our bearing. Then we can take our hub off. Typically your inner bearing and your seal are going to come off with the hub, but clearly this one had some leaking issues. So we'll have to pull those off manually. Now we're going to clean this grease off here just so we don't get it on anything. And now we're going to remove the four nuts on the bottom here that hold our axle down. They hold the U-bolts here. When replacing an axle, generally you're going to replace these as well just because these can kind of stretch over time. So if these nuts won't come off, you can also just cut your U-bolts on each side. Now we're gonna lift up on our axle and we can get it slid out. Now to get our new axle in place, we want to pull the hub off of one side here so we can slide it in just like we did before. Use the same technique to get this removed. Gonna tap it around that outside edge. Now we've got our keeper here. Just work around the edge, get that popped off using a flat blade screwdriver. Back that nut off. And we'll pull our assembly. Now you can see the red grease in there. We've got it on our bearings, on our seal, everything. We're going to be switching this out. You can see our retainer washer there. Hang on to that. This is a boat trailer, so we need to use marine grade grease. But even in a utility trailer application, switching out this red grease for blue grease, it's going to give you a higher drop point so that grease is able to absorb more heat. So it might just give you a longer lasting effect. Or utility trailers tend to sit around for a while. Moisture can get in the hubs and that'll help prevent it. Now we'll get our new axle slid in. You can see we want that it has a little hole in the bottom of it to rest right on top of that tab that sticks up. Now we're going to grab our new U-bolt kit and place these down and around just like our old U-bolts were. This part number is APUBR-1 designed for the 2 and 3 8 inch diameter axle. Now we can place the bottom bracket up on the U-bolts. You can see the hole here in the middle that's meant for that nut to come down through. Then in each position, we'll install one of the flange nuts. Now we'll go through and we're evenly going to tighten down our bolts. We'll get them snugged up first and then we can torque them. For these nuts, you'll want to use a 19 millimeter or 3 quarter inch socket. Notice we're tightening them evenly but in a crossing pattern. get our spindle cleared off here and in this situation we're going to be adding brakes but if you're just purely doing an axle replacement at this point you're just going to reverse that process we used in disassembling our old axle the only real difference will be that we'll have instead of a cotter pin here at the end holding it we're going to have that keeper that just slides over now we're going to take you through the process of how to pack your bearings 
You can see there's a wide gap here. We're just going to force grease through. We're going to capture it and then push. Capture and push. There's no real good clean way to do this. You can use a bearing packer, but a lot of people seldom have to do this. This is a maintenance thing. You will want to do it periodically, change out the grease in your hubs. But with the axle kit, you're going to have plenty of that grease on hand, so should probably last the lifetime of the trailer, really. And we're just going to force that grease in until we see it come out of this top side. You see those little bubbles start to form? You want to do that all the way around the outside. And once we've got that fully packed all the way around on both sides, we can get our hub installed. Now something else I like to do is eliminate any chance of there being an air pocket inside of our hub. So I take a good amount of grease. I'm going to put it all the way around the inside. Both front and back. I want it to be good and fully coated all the way through. We'll just keep any moisture from getting in there if it gets warm and condensation or anything like that. Slide that over our spindle. Make sure it slides onto your seal surface there. Try to pack as much in there as we can. Now we're ready to take care of our outside hardware. Now we'll take our bearing. We want the smaller side to face in. Slide that in. Now we've got the washer. That flat spot's going to match up with the flat spot on the spindle. That'll go in. Then we'll start threading on our nut. So we can use a pair of pliers to finish tightening that down. When you get it overly tight, like we've got it now, you can see that won't spin at all. So what we do is get it down there tight so we know we've got rid of all of our movement. Then we'll back that off a little bit. It's going to give us a little bit more of a free spinning, free moving situation. Let's clean that grease off and we'll get our keeper in place. Here we've got that little tab on our keeper. We want that to be on the flat spot of that spindle again. We just kind of push it over. You might have to tap it just a little bit if it doesn't go on with just a little bit of pressure. Rotate your bolt just or rotate your nut just a little bit there. You just want to make sure that's all the way in against that nut and that'll prevent it from backing off but still give us the play we need. Now one thing you do want to check is end play. So we want to push this in and pull out and make sure we don't feel any movement. Now we're going to put the end cap on. This is the one supplied with the axle. On a marine trailer, we do recommend bearing buddies. Basically, it's going to give you a grease circ here on the end with a spring that will just gently force that grease in there so you know you're going to have fully packed hub all the time. But whether you're using that type or this type, you just want to line it up, kind of get it square, and then just start tapping it a little bit. If you don't have a dead blow hammer, you could use a little piece of wood and then tap on it with a steel hammer. You just want to make sure that edge goes all the way in against your hub. And that's going to complete our look at the Dexter 3500 pound trailer axle with the idler hubs. Part number 35545I-ST-89.